Nobody ever suspected what ancient terror slept beneath the Vargas house. If you take a dilapidated, haunted mansion that's overflowing with evil, and you lock Richard Crenna inside with a group of hapless young people, don't forget one thing. A good supply of body bags. Today, we're digging deep into the haunted house subgenre. Maybe a little too deep. Grab your holy water and crosses, because we're discussing 1978's The Evil, which was directed by Gus Traconis. Disturb not he who is here held in chain. The Evil, which is also known as House of Evil, is ideal for Halloween viewing. Or if you're like most horror fans, it's good for any time of the year. Up front, we get a perfect setup for the chaos to come. A husband and wife team of doctors attempt to convert an abandoned Civil War era mansion into a drug rehabilitation center. A group of young volunteers join them to lend a hand in this noble cause. The only problem? The mansion is built directly over a gateway to hell. The evil. One of the stronger aspects of this film is its brisk pacing. Our leads are barely in the front door when the first sighting of a spirit takes place. The evil gives us just the right amount of exposition and a surprising amount of haunted house action. Some films of this nature include one too many scenes of someone investigating a mysterious noise, slowly checking it out, and then encountering nothing. Or maybe a cat will spawn from thin air. But The Evil is not one of those movies. Here, when someone makes the mistake of checking out a mysterious noise, there's a payoff. Ain't nothing. A violent, horrific payoff. I should note, this scene of a caretaker who gets completely incinerated happens within the first six minutes. So from the start, it's made brutally clear what we're in for. The madness is really kick-started when our lead CJ discovers a hidden trapdoor sealed with the cross. Curiosity gets the best of him, he removes the cross, and all hell is unleashed. Another highlight of the evil is the atmosphere. There's a sense of claustrophobia and impending doom throughout, all of which is heightened when the doors and windows are slammed shut by a supernatural force. Let's get the hell out of here. Everyone desperately tries to escape, but this house is not about to let anyone out that easily. These people try everything, soaring through doors, scaling the outside of the building, and busting windows. But they're either stopped dead in their tracks, or pulled right back into the house. On that note, modern horror has certainly made us accustomed to seeing victims dragged around by unseen entities, but the evil excels in this area, with pretty decent wire work for its time. And the result is terrifying. The cast here is solid with Richard Crenna delivering a standout performance as psychologist C.J. Arnold. Crenna's film career spanned decades, but I mainly recall him from the Rambo films as Colonel Troutman. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! His wife, Dr. Carolyn Arnold, is portrayed by Joanna Pettit, who some may recall from the 1967 Bond parody, Casino Royale. One of the more interesting, albeit grim notes in Pettit's bio, is that on August 8, 1969, she had lunch at the home of Sharon Tate, just hours before the infamous Manson murders were committed. Their meeting was even featured in Quentin Tarantino's 2019 film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, in which Pettit was portrayed by Ruma Willis. Keep everybody together. Don't let anybody wander off alone, all right? Good idea. The supporting cast here is filled out with younger players, such as Andrew Prine, Lynn Moody, Mary Louise Weller, and Cassie Yates, who all give solid performances. Throughout their ordeal, some of the volunteers remain level-headed, and others completely lose it, which makes sense given the circumstances. We'll go around. We're locked in. We're not gonna get out. We're not gonna get out. The ominous tone established in the evil suggests it's unlikely anyone is gonna survive. But to its credit, the film still doesn't treat the cast as soulless cannon fodder. Most everyone gets time to shine. 
And of course, every good horror movie needs a prankster to lighten the mood. And we get that here in the form of Pete Brooks, as played by George O'Hanlon Jr. He offers up some levity with timeless gags like the snake in a can routine, or this old trick. Gets them every time. The house in this film serves as a horrific character in and of itself. It almost feels as if this mansion has a demented personality. The inhabitants are taunted, lured into traps, and sometimes they're possessed. This ongoing torture is inflicted in all kinds of disturbing ways. And there are other occasions where the house just flat out decides to take someone out by whatever means necessary. I also have to note, the evil features an eerie score composed by Johnny Harris, which captures the bleak mood perfectly. Especially when the unseen force is present. And there's one very out of the ordinary sound in the mix too. For some reason, when the bloodthirsty dog Kaiser is on the run, a TIE fighter sound can be heard. Why is there a TIE fighter sound mixed into this otherwise horrific soundscape? I don't know. In any case, if this movie proves one thing, it's that maybe we need more random TIE fighter sounds in horror movies. The husband and wife team featured in the evil are pretty easy to get behind. Their attempt at converting this old mansion into a drug rehab is a worthy cause. They just happen to choose the worst place imaginable. Joanna Pettit does very well here. Her character basically embodies faith. Her willingness to believe actually helps keep her a few steps ahead of everyone. There must have been some great conflict in this house. Between what? Good and evil. You mean between God and the devil? Since she's clearly attuned to the supernatural forces at play, it makes sense that Carolyn is the first person to encounter a lone spirit. Later, she attempts to piece together clues from writings left behind by the previous homeowner, a Civil War general named Emilio Vargas. So her character is given more than enough to do here. Well, you can all sit here and discuss theology if you want. I'm going to try to find a way out of here. In stark contrast to his wife, we have CJ, our non-believer. Even in the face of bloody insanity, CJ continually insists there must be a logical, scientific reason behind everything. This guy's skepticism does get questionable at certain points. I mean, how many bizarre deaths do you have to witness before you open your mind? This deep questioning as to the true nature of what's happening and the religious implications works extremely well. Now, I have to touch on a finale, which is insane. So from this point on, we'll be going into heavy spoiler territory. That said, if you want to check out The Evil, it's out there on Blu-ray, and it's presently floating around to watch free on Tubi and elsewhere. Okay, let's go. So, after the house finishes wiping out the entire group of volunteers, we learn that the apparition Caroline has been seeing is actually the spirit of the previous homeowner, Emilio Vargas. Caroline becomes possessed by Vargas, and he uses her body as a conduit to tell CJ that The Evil was unleashed because he unlocked the pit. Good going, man. With that, CJ and Carolyn grab the cross and head down to the cellar to seal the gateway. Unfortunately, a powerful force knocks Carolyn into the pit. CJ goes after her and ends up in a creepy white cavern where he meets, you guessed it, the devil himself. This is definitely one of the more unique takes on the devil. What is it you want? After all I've put you through and you still don't know. Here, Satan is portrayed by character actor Victor Buono, who was no stranger to villainous roles. He also appeared in films such as The Strangler, Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte, and you may recognize him as the villainous King Tut from the 60s TV series Batman. Despite his limited screen time, Buono's depiction of the devil is a real highlight. He has a vile, sinister presence, and the subtle manner in which he grows increasingly devilish from shot to shot was just creepy as hell. By now, CJ is finally a true believer. He refuses to give up the one item the devil desires. Your cross. It's a thing of God. How could it come here? 
The devil responds to this defiance by torturing him. Thankfully, Carolyn saves the day with one swift stab to the chest. Together, she and CJ escape and seal the pit once and for all. We then get a great moment when the windows and doors of the house finally reopen. As CJ and Carolyn flee from this hellhole, the spirit of Emilio Vargas watches from a window. Now, many people, including the director himself, are not fans of this ending. It's even been rumored that alternate prints of the film exist with the entire devil sequence completely cut out. So, I guess I'm alone in being a fan of this conclusion. Granted, we lose some of the intrigue with the reveal that Satan is pulling the strings. But I still feel like the inclusion of the devil works. The majority of the film featured the evil as an unseen force, picking off victims one at a time slasher style. But all the same, I also enjoyed the contrast of this bizarre, almost otherworldly encounter. All of which does tie right back to the biblical conflict suggested earlier by Carolyn. But I think the main reason this finale worked for me is that by establishing the culprit behind the carnage is the devil himself, you can't get any more evil than that. Look out! Terror that turns laughter into screams. For the house belongs to the evil. The Evil is another easy horror pick for me to recommend. This 1970s gem isn't exactly widely known, so if you've never seen it, I'd say give it a shot. I'd rate The Evil 4 out of 5 Possessed Dogs. If you have seen The Evil, feel free to comment below. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, hit like, hit sub, and hit that notification bell too if you haven't already. Thanks for watching everyone, be well, stay safe, and take care. Later.